Come on, let's thank him. Hallelujah, let's thank him. Hallelujah, let's thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless and praise his all your wonderful name. For you alone are worthy of all the praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. God, you're an awesome God, a mighty God, a great God, a true and living God. With the Holy One of Israel, it's in you and who we move and live and have our being. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We do confess our false repentance of our sins and thank you for your faithfulness and forgiving us of every sin, cleansing us, washing us, making us whole. That with the vessels of honor sanctified in me for the master's use and prepared unto every good work, we love you and appreciate you. Thank you for choosing users, not to point and calling and sending us to fulfill the purpose, plan, and destiny you have for our lives. Thank you for these, your precious people who are here in the sanctuary. Those who may be viewing this telecast, we greet you and thank you, Father, for great is thy faithfulness, O God. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All that we have, thine has provided. And Father, we thank you now. Let this word come forth, accompanied by the anointing let yokes be destroyed, lives be saved, healed, delivered, and set free from the bonds of sin and Satan. We bless you, we praise you, we exhort you for what you're going to do. We bind every spirit that's not of you. We loose the spirit of liberty and loose the spirit of truth to be in this place. Quicken our ears, our hearts, our minds, our spirits to receive and discern the truth your word as your word continues to come alive in each and every one of our lives. Bless us and we know we're blessed. Keep us and we know we're kept. And we speak these words in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord name. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. The song says, I want to thank you. Amen. I just want to thank you for all you have done for me. Is there anybody that God has did something good for you? I said, is there anybody that God has done something good for you? Amen. Praise God. We give honor to God who's the heaven of our lives, Son Jesus Christ, to the precious Holy Spirit. We thank God. Amen. We will recognize Pastor Mamie Torbert. Amen. Thank God for all of our pastors, ministers. To you, the precious people of God, we greet you in the precious name of Jesus. Just want to encourage you with this word. Go to the book of Matthew chapter. 14 the book of Matthew chapter 14 a very familiar scripture for those of you that read your Bible and a very interesting text for those of you that would like to begin Matthew 14 I want to start with verse number twenty four amen twenty four and then want to go through verse 30, verse 24 through verse 30. Look around, make certain that everyone has access to a Bible. If not, share your Bible. You don't mind. If you don't mind standing for the reverence of God's word, can you lift your Bible? Say, so this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. It is the word of God. I shall have what it says I can have. I will be what it says I can be. I would do what it says I can do. I would say. say what it states I can say. Says I, can. I am. I am. I know I am. I know I am. A living recipient. A living recipient of the manifested promises manifested. of God's word. You believe that? Give me a shout in this, please. Amen. Hear ye the word of the Lord coming out of the New King James Version. Just in case you have a different translation, at least you know we're on the same block. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. 
prayed. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Amen. And so is the word of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk with you in the time that's allotted to me from this subject. I may not have arrived, but I moved. Can you say that with me? I may not have arrived, but I moved. Say it one more time like it's in your spirit. I may not have arrived, but I moved. I want you to touch and agree with me on these several things. As after our reading is written word here in the spoken word and receiving the rhema word, we should now begin to experience the manifested word, enjoy the fruits, prosperity, the success, the victory, protection of his word in Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands before the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, as the servant has decreed and declared, be it so in Jesus' name. Give him a praise because you're going to do just that. I may not have arrived, but I moved. In this particular text, we find here how that um, Jesus had just, uh, the disciples, let me say it this way, had just witnessed a tremendous miracle of Jesus feeding the multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. And there are times that what we are going through, what God brings us through, it enables us to see the hand of God in awesome ways. Now, I would like to ask, is there anyone in here that has ever seen a miracle from God? And you notice that after the miracle, your faith has been increased. Am I talking to anybody? And so it makes the next situation or dilemma that you may be confronted with, it encourages you because you're able to reflect back and remember what God had did for you before. And for those persons who were not able to attest to the fact that they've seen a miracle, I want to encourage you to let you know that there is a miracle that's about to happen for you. When we look at this scripture, we find here that after Jesus had fed the multitude, he now sends the disciples away. And it's so amazing, Pastor Will, in this text, that normally it's a custom that the elders or the leadership would be the ones to turn the lights off and lock the doors. But here Jesus is saying, you go, I'll take care of everything. Are you with me? And so the text goes that Jesus tells them to go on a boat and he gives them specific instructions on the direction to go but not exactly where they're going. All right? So let's look at this, if you would, please. It says that after, in verse 24, uh, verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But verse 24, but the ship was where? Now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was what? Contrary. Now, something else for those of you that are looking to grow in God. Anytime that you say, yes, Lord, usually you can anticipate or expect something is going to happen that's going to want to deter you. Am I talking to anybody here? Anytime you say, for God I live, for God I'll die, I'll let nothing or no one separate me from the love of God. How many know that sounds good? It has a nice ring to it. But how many know that just because you said that and you was in an anointed environment when you said it, or you may have just got a blessing from God and you said it, regardless to what it was when you said it, let me tell you something, there will come times and that will challenge you your walk. 
Am I talking to anybody? So the scripture says, and but the ship was what? Tossed and was with the waves, and for the wind was conned what? Trevor. But let's look at verse 25. Would you stay with me? Because I won't be long on this one. It says, in the fourth watch of the night, what happened? Jesus went unto them what? Walking on the sea. Now, I want to kind of paint a picture for you so you can really see how this verse is will come together. Here the Bible says that this ship is in the midst of the sea but yet is being confronted with a strange wind. And the wind, oh my God, somebody needs to give God a praise. Watch this now. The wind got in cahoots with the water. And the two of them cause a disturbance. Ooh. Oh, God. Are y'all with me? I said the wind and the water, they congregated together and they were causing a big stir. Now watch this now. Jesus did not, we don't read it in the Bible, where he told the wind what to do. Neither is it given that he told the water what to do. But the main thing is he told his disciples what to do. Oh, uh, that, that, that's going to help somebody. So what are you saying? As you obeying God, you don't know what's ahead, but God does. Oh, my God. Okay, now watch this now. The text says, and Jesus went to go what? Meet them on upon went unto them walking on the sea. But there's a question that comes to mind. If they are on the ship, they're being tossed to and fro. How is it that Jesus met them and there was a contrary wind? Am I the only one that maybe had that question? Look, look at it. Would you read it? It says, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were what? Troubled, saying it is a what? Spirit, and they cried out for what? Fear. Now let me show you something else to consider in this text. One, that if the wind and the water is acting contrary, that's one part of the scene but yet it says that Jesus went to meet them. So now the question becomes, how is it that the wind and the water is doing their thing and the disciples are doing their thing and yet the text says Jesus is on his way to meet them. I'll tell you, neighbor, good news is coming. And then it says, watch this now, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying what? Be of what? It is I, be not what? Be not afraid. Now watch this text. Jesus in the midst of oh, the Holy on this one. Jesus in the midst of what they're going to, he doesn't address the wind and the water yet. He addresses the, the fear in the disciples. Wow. wow. So before we can see a miracle, Jesus has to stabilize the believer so the believer can believe in the miracle. Wow. Wow. Look at the text. I told you I won't be long on this one. Watch this now. And Peter answered him and said, what? Lord, if it be thou, bid me to what? Come unto thee where? On the water. Here's something else that's interesting about this text. Peter, oh my God, this is going to mess with some people. Watch this, but it's going to help some others. Peter was saying, I'd rather take a chance or a step of faith where a voice like Jesus is rather than to stay with these people who's supposed to have faith with me. Some folks decide they want to hang around the whiners and the complainers while Jesus is trying to offer them relief. Are you, is anybody faith being challenged? Watch this now. And so the verse says, and Peter answered him, said, Lord, watch this, verse 29. What this verse 29 says? And he said, he being who? Jesus, come. 
Watch this now. Jesus still doesn't address the wind and the water. But yet he tells Peter to what? Come. So, Minister Holly, why would Jesus tell Peter to come where he is and Peter know that there is a wind and a wave that was stirred up by the water that is still going on? Because it doesn't say that it stopped just because Jesus was there. Oh, Lord. So, who are you saying? Your sickness does not go away just because you call Jesus. Your finances does not improve just because you, because you call Jesus. Jesus first has to be positioned in the midst of what you're going through so you can realize who he is. There has to be a lineup between your adversity and your challenge and the Jesus you call. <laughs> what are you saying? Watch this now. Anybody remember when Elijah met those 400 plus prophets at Mount Carmel? Elijah said what? You call on your God first. Then he says what? Call him a little louder because he may be sleeping or he may went on a vacation without telling you. Is anybody getting this here? So what? Then when it comes Elijah's time, Elijah, watch this now, they still both faced with the same situation. They had to say, because Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire be God. Watch this now. Watch this. Elijah says what? Add more water. Add a little bit more water. Now, how many know that water is normally designed to put fires out? Am I talking to anybody here? Somebody is about to experience a miracle that's really going to put some folks in amazement. That's a word for somebody. Now watch this. So the that text in Kings, it says what? That when they put so much water, that the water what? Are you with me? It fell over. So that was what? Overflow in the water. Anybody hear me? We talked about this morning. Morning, God moving you from just enough to the land of more than enough. Are you with me? So watch this now. So the text says, when Elijah prayed, I'm just going to get a short version. Elijah prayed, the, the scripture says, the fire came down and it uses this term, uh, Mr. Evans, what's it? It licked up are oh, you with me? It's, anybody ever remember cake batter? And you just ask your mom or grandma or auntie, can, can, can I have that little bit? And, 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 and you take your finger, look like some of y'all having some memories about it right now. And you take your finger and you lick it around. And, and, and then, I don't know if y'all was bold enough, but sometimes you lift the bowl up and, and, and you just put it in your face and you just, anybody with me? Because you wanted to make sure all the batter was gone. That's how that fire did. It licked it up so that there was no residue of even water. Oh my God. Give him a shout right there. Give him a shout. Oh. Glory to your name, God. Give him a praise right there. That's a that's a praise. Ho oh, oh. That's a praise break right there. That's a that's a praise break right there. That's a praise break right there. So now Jesus is there in the midst of the water. He doesn't come on the boat yet because why? The people on the boat are not postured to receive the king. Uh -uh, uh -uh. So he says, I need permission to operate in your realm. So he says, who on the boat is willing to give me permission to perform a miracle where you at? That's all. I might as well let me go behind the curtain because somebody going to look at their family member and they're going to say, and those that ain't got no family member probably going to look at a picture of them. That's why it could be the reason why some miracles hasn't come to your house yet because there's some unbelief in the house. Ah, right. 
right. Is this helping anybody? So the text says, I need somebody that is willing to give me permission to operate on your realm. Watch this now. Because why? Jesus wants to remove the myth or the excuse that if Jesus would have been on the boat at this moment, that they could have said, well, you the son of God and automatically, yeah, things are supposed to work out for you. But Jesus said, no, you ain't ready for that lesson yet. Let me show you another lesson that you could, should be able to be more palatable for you. Watch this down. So the scripture says, Peter says, come. I mean, Jesus says to Peter, come. And the scripture says, what? He, the first words are bid me to come where you are and the word bid means command me in other words give me the level of instruction you gave me when you fed the multitude where you told them what do we have in the audience and the response was we got there's a lad with two fish and five loaves of bread and so he said what bring it now excuse me I just had another Holy Ghost moment when you have been obeying God your ear is attuned to how he speaks to you so Peter was saying speak to me with the anointing of the ear that you've given me to hear you speak to me at that level and I'll know it's you while everybody else is calling you spirit he called him Lord Watch this down. Watch this text. Is this helping anybody? Watch this down. So the scripture says, he, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. but straightway Jesus spoke to him and said, Be a good cheer in his eyes, not be not afraid. Verse 29. And when he said, Come, uh, what happened? Uh, Peter was come down out of the ship, and what happened? Scripture says he was swam. He swam to Jesus. He backpedaled to Jesus. He, he did the um, floating to Jesus. And he swimmers in here. Give me, give me some other terms. What he probably could have did. He stroked to Jesus. He did the backstroke to Jesus. It, what, what else he did? He, he did the swan to Jesus. Come on, come on now. He, 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 he what? Oh, yeah. All right. Watch this now. And so, he, but the script no, that ain't what he did. I just asked for your sponsor. Thank you. But the scripture says he what walked. Where was Jesus? Jesus had what walked on the water. So when Jesus told him to do so, oh, 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 give God a praise. Watch this. This is somebody, a free one for somebody. Watch this. The difference between when God is speaking to you and when the devil is speaking to you, when God is speaking, you go up. When the devil is speaking, you go down. Let me bring it in another way. When God is speaking to you, your circumstances change for the better. But when the devil is speaking to you, your circumstances continue to decline. Let me bring it another way. When God is speaking to you, there is a peace in your spirit. But when the devil is speaking to you, there's questions in your spirit. Okay, I ain't going to give you no more. Watch this now on that part. Watch this now. And so the scripture says, and he began to what? Walk on the water to go to who? Jesus. Now watch this now. Verse 30. But he saw the wind was what? Boisterous. And he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried saying what? I can't hardly hear you. Lord, save me. Notice, I wonder how come Minister Garden, Gardner, he did not say save us. He said save me. Everybody with me? Now some folk will say, well, what, what about the other disciples? Watch this down. Ooh, excuse me, I just had a little Holy Ghost moment. Watch this down. There are times that you are praying a prayer even some people you want to bring along with you, they're not there, so you need God to respond to you where you at. Because some people you may want God to save us, they may not want to be saved. See, some folks trying to bring folk with them at the next level, God is taking them to, and God is saying, I'm going to hold you up until you drop them off. 
Watch this now. Look at the text. And it says, and he was afraid and beginning to sing, he cried saying, what? Lord, save me. But verse 31 says what? And immediately Jesus, what? Stretched out his hands. In this version says, stretched forth his hand. And what? I can't hardly hear you. I'd say it one more time. He caught him and said unto him, O thou of what? Wherefore didst thou what? Now, I'm going to share something with you. If you look closely at the scripture and follow these verses, the disciples on the boat did not hear Jesus tell Peter that. Only Peter. See, the enemy will sometimes want to speak to us while we're going through some challenges and we feel like we failed. The enemy will try to grow, blow it up, having us think somebody else know what we're going through. Am I talking to anybody in here? Watch this now. But that was a Peter and Jesus me moment. Watch this. And so he says, what? Oh, thou little faith, why did you doubt in spite of what you were going through? Watch the text. Now the verse says what? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind what? Ceased. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just give you this before I sit down. The wind what? It what? The, another word for ceased is what? It stopped. All right. Now, let me show you something in the text. This text shows us the people on the boat saw Peter walk on water, but they never saw him sink. <laughs> uh, can I say that one more time? They saw him walk on water, but they never saw him sink. The next time they saw Peter, they realized we should have hung with Peter because Peter came back with the master of the sea. Is anybody getting this? So in other words, break this down to the 21st century, that what you are going through, the people see you anointed. They see that God is with you, but they don't see what the process that you went through for you to be now anointed stronger with Jesus. They only see the after effect. You know what you went through. That's why it become puzzlings to some people. Don't you know what I went through? No, they wasn't there. And it's by God's design they wasn't there. Because you don't need nobody else getting credit for what God is doing in your life. Uh, 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 am I talking to anybody in here? So God says, I'm the only one to get the glory out of this. I'm the only one that gonna, you're going to get the story out of this. I'm the one that's going to bring you through. God wants you to understand that it is him. And who we move, we live and have our being. Watch this as I close. And when they were coming to the ship, what happened? The scripture says, and the wind stopped. It ceased. Are you with me? We don't know how long Peter was out there. That's not important. The main thing is Peter left us clues on when we are going through what to do. First, we got to call on Jesus. Oh, oh, let me back up a little bit. First, we need to move on the word of Jesus, then call on Jesus, and then watch Jesus walk back with us. So give him some praise. I'm, I'm, I'm done. So I may not have arrived, but I moved. Everybody got it? So if people talking about you, because you're walking out on faith and you trust in God. Now, let me just bring this in. Make certain is faith and not fiction. It's the difference between faith and fiction. Am I talking to anybody in here? So I want you to understand this. Watch this. God is about to show off in your situation. I'm not talking to anybody here. I said God's about to show off in your situation. 
I say God is about to show off in your situation. Because by the time Peter comes back, his level of faith is at a whole nother dimension. There is no other scripture whether the disciples' faith ever reached that level like Peter. Do your research. Watch this now. Now their faith did rise on other occasions, but not like Peter. And they talk about Peter's demeanor, Peter's characteristics and all. That's wonderful, but at least Peter was willing to say, I'm going to take my faith to another level. Come on, give God some praise. So, Father, we thank you. We bless and praise and exhort you. For you alone are worthy of all the praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. God, we thank you. There's no one like you. For unto thee, O Lord, do we lift up our soul. O my God, we trust in thee. Let us not be ashamed. Let not our enemies triumph over us. For great is the Lord, and he's greatly to be praised. The name of the Lord our God is a strong tower. The righteous run unto it and are saved. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of your people. Thank you for the miracles that you're going to perform this week. Thank you for the awesome praise report that shall come from the lips of these your precious people. And Father, we thank you now for there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. And Father, we thank you now for answered prayer. We speak these words in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord's name. Let the church say, Amen.